I would love to be able to move abroad somewhere with sunnier weather, you know, better climate and all that sort of stuff. But there are a few reasons why that's not on my agenda, at least for the foreseeable future. First of all, here in the UK, me and my wife, we have an established means of supporting ourselves and supporting our family. We both have jobs, we both have careers. We can move around probably to different parts of the country and work remotely. Now, the problem is if we, if we move somewhere abroad, say for example, if we wanted to move to Uganda, where my family's from or to Jamaica where my wife's family's from we would need to establish a means of supporting ourselves and supporting our family the perfect scenario would be that we can move to one of these places or some other place and we would be able to still continue working for the employers that we work for now or other UK based employers while earning a UK salary working remotely but unfortunately that's not that possible for us neither of us work for example in I don't know IT or some other sector that is very used to this kind of thing, people working remotely from different parts of the world. I don't know how we would, be, we would be able to generate an income. And if you can't generate an income, well, how are you gonna keep the roof over your head? How are you gonna spend on the things that you need in order to, to be able to live out there? Now, of course, we, we might be able to, to rent our home here, but that's not gonna generate enough money to A, pay the mortgage here, but also B, to sustain us overseas. We need to find a way of generating an income while we're out there. So that's the first, challenge. The second challenge is the same challenge that people face when they're thinking about moving even just within the country that they live in. If you're thinking of moving out from a city to some other village or some other town across the other side of England or Britain, then there's a challenge with regard to your networks, your support networks. Now, I know we're very individualistic in our mindset in, in the West, generally speaking, and there's often this idea that, oh, just go and move abroad, it's fine, just move, just move. But a lot of the, the value that we have in life, a lot of the beauty that we have in life, a lot of the, the strength that we have in our life comes from our support networks. It comes from our relatives. It comes from my, you know, my in-laws. We live very close to my in-laws, for example. So when it comes to just small things like school pickups and drop-offs and, you know, babysitting and some, you know, holidays and all that sort of stuff, we have family members who can help. And that, particularly when our children were very, very young, that was extremely important, critically important. We would not, I wouldn't have got through that those early years if it wasn't for the fact that we did have some support from our in-laws. Now, imagine we move ourselves thousands of miles away where we don't know anybody. It's not so much of an issue, of course, if you're single and you don't have family, you don't have children, great. That's, this isn't an issue, but for me, this is a critically important issue. I need to be around friends and family, and all of my friends and all of most all of my family that I know and trust live here in the UK. Now, a third and very important factor relates to the fact that I know this country. I know England. I know Britain extremely well. I know the language, of course. I'm fully fluent in English. I understand when other people are talking. I understand the customs of this country. I understand the little micro customs, the accepted norms, the do's and the don't do's. I understand the history of this, this country. I understand the, the local histories of where I've lived as well. I understand the dynamics, the community dynamics, how people relate to each other. It's not perfect. Britain isn't perfect, but I at least understand this country very, very, very well. I can operate anywhere in this country with ease. Now compare that to if I was to relocate to say somewhere like a Uganda or a Ghana or somewhere. Sure, people speak English there, that's one of the main official languages, but as you'll know if you ever go to one of these kinds of countries, English isn't the language that people are bantering in. English isn't the language of commerce and, and all these kinds of things. People can speak English if need be, but they're speaking in Luganda, they're speaking in Swahili in Kenya, they're speaking in Chui in Ghana. Through experience I've seen when you go to other countries as a traveler, as a, as a tourist, you know, people very quickly, as soon as you open your mouth, people recognize, ah, they clock it. Ah, this guy's, this guy's a Muzungu, basically. This guy's from foreign. And they get, when, once they clock that you're from the UK or from you're from foreign, they clock it and they will change the way that they, op they operate with you. They will raise prices. They will try to get as much. And it's, you know, I'm not saying that they're scammers or whatever, but it's like, listen, if someone's coming to this country and they've got, they're likely to have a lot more money than most people here, well, they should pay more. They should be charged more. Just as far as being able to integrate and really feel comfortable in the country, you need to be able to be, I think, you need to really be able to speak the language. And of course, you can learn the language. I'm not saying that these are insurmountable obstacles, but at my late age, and particularly with two young children, this isn't 
something that is very quickly going to be able to be resolved. Of course, what I would say on that though, is that the best way to learn a language and a custom and culture is to just go there and immerse yourself. And I would love to do that. A lot of these things come down to my stage of life. I'm now a big man. I'm not, a, I'm not in my twenties anymore. I'm not young, single and footloose and fancy free anymore. I have a family, I have young children to support and to not just to support financially, but to support emotionally, psychologically, spiritually, all these kinds of things. I have a wife, I have a marriage, I have a home here, I have a career here, all these kinds of things. For me, I feel like it's a bit late in the day to be thinking about making these kinds of radical changes. When you when you don't have children, of course, you can, you can experiment. And if it goes wrong, it's fine, it's just you. But if we experiment now being parents, and it goes horribly wrong, that's not just our lives that have been messed up, it's also our children's lives. The key to me is that if you are, if you think that you might have an interest in relocating, moving somewhere abroad, start from as early as you can, start from as young as you can, start to go to visit some of these places. This is what I should have done, I should have been visiting Uganda regularly. My parents didn't take me there once when I was growing up, but you know, I've been an adult for a lot longer than I was a child now. So I can't keep blaming them. I should have been going if it was in fr you know, front and center in my mind. I should have been visiting regularly. I should have been learning the languages. I should have been one of the most important things. I should have been thinking about the kind of career that I, I'm going to get into. I should have been thinking, okay, this career needs to be something that will enable me or afford me the opportunity to work remotely, to work abroad. Obviously that wasn't so much of a thing 15, 20 years ago when I was starting out in my career, but it's been enough of a thing for long enough now. I, I could have pivoted into more tech-based roles, for example, but I didn't. So that's probably my advice to you. If you're thinking about moving abroad, you know, start early. And if you have children, start putting it in your children's kind of uh, consciousness early. One of the things we're going to do with our children is I'm going to take my children to Uganda. I'm going to take them to, J to Jamaica. They're going to be familiar with being in a different environment, a different culture. Hopefully we're going to be able to learn different languages as well so that when they start to get to there later, later on, they'll be up for, oh yeah, maybe daddy, I might maybe want to go and, you know, stay for some months in Uganda. Cool. We can make that happen. But for me, these are the key reasons as to why for in the near future, we don't have any plans to be relocating abroad. But this might change. And if it does change, I will most surely let everybody know in these videos. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope I've explained with some clarity as to you know my, my approach and my views with regard to where I'm going to live in the world. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know your, your ideas. Are you look are you have you moved abroad, for example? If so, how's it been? Do you recommend it? Or you know, what are the pitfalls that you've come across and what are the what are the good things that you've come across as well? And what advice would you give to me as well in my life situation? How what do you think I would be able to do to position myself to be able in a position to relocate successfully with my wife and with my with my children? All right, take care. Hope you've enjoyed this. Make sure you watch the other videos on my on my channel. YouTube will recommend one here for you to watch, and you might also want to watch this one here. Take care of yourselves, and I'll speak to you next time.